Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are adding integers using a number line today. Let's get started. We're going to have a quick mini lesson, do some practice problems, and some that involve uh, word problems. Let's look. Integers, first of all, we need to define what an integer is. I'm going to show you some examples of integers so you can see what they look like. 7, 4, ne negative 1, 6, negative 2, negative 3, positive 3, negative 4, negative 5, positive 5, negative 6. These are all examples of integers. Integers include positive and negative numbers. And that's what we're going to be working with today. When we have a number line, we're going to think about the numbers compared to zero. Positive numbers are on the right of zero. For example, if I had the number six, I would start at zero and go to the right six spaces, and that's how I would label six on a number line. Negative numbers are on the left of zero. So if I have the number negative six, I would start at zero again and move six places to the left on the number line, giving me that point right there. When we're adding integers on a number line, we're basically going to be doing those same things, only we're joining together numbers that we have. Here's an example. <clears throat> Seven plus negative four. So I would begin by going up to seven. Positive seven will bring me to the right seven spaces. Then I'll join that together with negative four. So I'll move back four spaces to the left, leaving me with my final answer that my answer is three. Seven plus negative four is equal to three. Let me show you another example of adding integers. If I have three and I add negative nine, this is what it would look like on a number line. I would start out by going from zero up to three. Remember three is a positive number, so I'm going to move three places to the right. Then I'm going to go minus nine or plus negative nine, which means I'll go nine spaces to the left. That lands me on this spot right here, which is negative six. So just keep in mind this, <clears throat> if you have more negatives than positives, your answer is going to be negative. That's just a way of thinking about it, right? In this one, there's nine negatives, so that arrow is, is a lot longer, right? There's more negatives than positives. There's only three positives, so your final answer is going to end up being negative. Let's look at another example. In this one, we have negative five plus 12. So we'll begin by going to the left of the zero, five spaces. Next, we're going to add on a positive 12, which means going 12 spaces to the right, giving us our final answer of seven. In this example, you can see that if you have more positives than negatives, your answer will end up being positive. So the order of the numbers does not matter. What matters is, do you have more positives or more negatives? In our previous example, we had more negatives, so our final answer was negative. In this example, we have more positives, so our final answer is going to end up on the right of the zero, or in other words, be a positive number. Now it's time for some practice. With the practice problems, as always, I want you to pause the video, try them out on your own, and then watch the video so you can resume the video so that you actually end up do, seeing me solve those questions that you have worked on. Here's the question, seven plus one. You might be thinking, Mr. Buffington, are you serious? That seems like quite an easy question, but I do want you to try it out. So go ahead, pause the video. Hello and welcome back. Did you realize that seven plus one is eight? I hope so. Let's see what that looks like on a number line. I would start at zero, move seven places to the right. Then I would move one additional place to the right, getting me to the point of eight. This helps to teach us something. That if both numbers are positive, 
your answer is going to be positive. Following those same rules or that same example, I want you to try this one. Negative 4 plus negative 5. Try that one out, see what you get, and then come back to the, the video. Welcome back to the video. Negative 4 plus negative 5 would look like this. I start out with negative 4. I'm adding an additional negative 5. Whenever we're adding on another number, we, we start kind of at the point of the arrow. So we start at 0 and then we move somewhere. And then whatever we're adding on, we start at that point and continue on. This gives us negative 9. The rules for adding negatives are, if both numbers are negative, your final answer will be negative. And that's a rule that a lot of people get messed up on. So now let's do some practice. We're going to practice putting all of this together, everything we've talked about, numbers that are that uh, have the same sign, numbers that have different signs. We're going to put all of this together in this question, negative 3 plus negative 2 plus 4. Pause and try this one out. Hey, welcome back. This is going to have three arrows on the number line. It's going to have our first one starting at 0, going three spaces to the left. That's negative 3. We're going to then go from that point, negative 2 more, which gives us negative 5 plus our positive 4. So again, all we've done in this question, in this step, is added negative 3 plus negative 2. Now we're going to add that 4 onto there, bringing us to our final answer of negative 1. Negative 5 plus 4 gives us negative 1. There's more negatives here than positives, so we end up with a negative answer. I hope that's what you got when you did it. If not, take a look at that and try and understand um, where the mistake was made. Let's try another question. This one is negative 1 plus 7 plus negative 6. Did you try it out? Using the number line, you can visually see what this is going to do. We'll start out with negative 1. That's starting at 0, going one space to the left. Then we're going to add 7 to that. Moving 7 places to the right, that gets us up to positive 6. Again, we've just added negative 1 plus 7 to get our first number positive 6. Now we're going to subtract 6. This should look familiar from the last lesson that we did on adding opposites. Positive 6 plus negative 6 gives us 0. It lands right on that point. You'll notice if you look at the original question, you have negative 1 and negative 6. That means you have 7 negatives and 7 positives because you have positive 7. And they'll even out to being 0. Let's look at a word problem now and see how we do when we're putting this all together in a word problem. If you start with $2 and you spend $3, then earn $5, how much money do you have? I want you to try that one out on your own. I'm not giving you anything else to go on. Give it a shot. Three, two, one, go. Welcome back. I hope you've solved this. Now we're going to take a look at the expression that I would write to solve this word problem. I would say 2 minus 3 plus 5. Or I could also write this as 2 plus negative 3 plus 5. Both would mean the same thing. Let's take a look using our number line. We start with positive 2. That's where I'm starting. I have $2. Then I'm spending $3 which gives me negative one dollars. Now I'm going to earn five more dollars, bringing me up to four total dollars, positive four. Money is a way that we often show positive and negative numbers. It's, it's one of those common 
common tools that we use for showing positive and negative numbers. So you'll see that in a lot of word problems, working with money. And there's our final answer, positive four. A couple of things to remember. If there are more positives, the answer is positive. If there are more negatives, the answer will be negative. And if the numbers have the same sign, add them up and keep the sign the same as what it was. I hope that that lesson has been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.